Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hi guys, welcome back. So tonight, I told my wife I had to run some errands, which is true, honey, if you're watching. Um, and I said that I had to go check out some stuff that a very nice lady that I met before had for sale. Last time uh, we went and we bought a safe and some other antiques and collectibles. So we're over at the place checking things out. Now, I brought my little BMW wagon. It's got decent storage capacity, but I don't think it's got enough for what I've done to myself today. <laughs> but I am gonna utilize my roof rack. I've got it opened up because I found all kinds of neat things. Uh, let me show you the pile. So it started off with me just finding two or three little things, and I thought, oh, I'll have a shoebox worth of stuff. His turned into this massive pile of stuff. And the reason why um, you can see there's some car parts here. If you guys recall, I had a Porsche 914 project car a while back. I sold it, but at the time I was looking all over for a rear bumper and for a front bumper and stuff like that. And they weren't really easy to find. And look, they're all right here. And the crazy thing is, this house is only a few doors down from my son's friend. So the whole time I was looking for those parts, we were three doors over. I was, I was dropping him off to go play uh, from where I needed to find all these parts. It's absolutely crazy. So all kinds of uh, old Porsche parts, um, roof rack bits and pieces, and some collectibles. So we'll go through some of this stuff later on at the shop. Some old camping supplies, if you guys remember using the old... Uh, poles in your canvas temp. Not many people do that anymore, but my friend Matt always tells me to look for canvas tents because he's restoring an old trailer. And Matt, if you're watching, I didn't forget you. Uh, I'll give you a call after uh, after we're done loading up here today. But I've got to get all this stuff loaded up in my car and then we'll do a um, sequel, not a sequel. I'll do a, a time lapse later on as I'm going through some of these boxes. So time to load up. I cannot believe that all fit in my car. Uh, no, I'll probably leave those. I already look like somebody who's living in the back of my vehicle right now. If I get pulled over, they might have sympathy for me, but it's a Beamer, so then they won't. They'll just think I'm some crazy eccentric person, which I am. So we'll try and get this back safe and sound. And the total cost for everything that's in this car today was $200 Canadian, so that's probably around 175 US, somewhere around there. Um, I don't know, right now, There, I know there's a few things that I can get my money back on. Um, I don't know, however, um, how easy it's going to be for me to sell the Porsche parts. There should be somebody on a Porsche uh, 914 group or something that's looking for bumpers or trim pieces. Hubcaps, I know there was a radio in there and the early German radios are tough to find. So uh, it should work out okay. But right now, uh, I'm just kind of stressing because the car is completely packed and I don't want it to be. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's pretty messy in here and I don't have much room at the store or at my house. It's getting to be a situation, um, but I'll worry about pack unpacking some of this stuff tonight and show you what we got. All right, let's look through the box of treasure together. Empty chocolate boxes, a must for every collector. Okay, I'm gonna come around on this side. And you'll notice that I'm using a tripod so I can have both hands involved in this. This looks like it was um, mini curling rocks from a little curling game. You know, just it's sort of funny little things that people collect. My friend Kelly collects stuff like that because he builds one quarter scale towns and villages and everything and he's always looking for one quarter scale. So if this times four, one, two, three, four, was uh, it's pretty close to the size of a real curling rock, he'd probably buy that. Okay, I can tell this box. Now I have not been through this box yet, so we're going through this together. That's a Lionel train or Lionel train, depending on where you're from. Little Santa Fe, it's a plastic bodied engine. Most of these diesel Locomotives are plastic either way. Probably mid to, mid 1950s, maybe early 1960s, somewhere in that range, like 55 to 61, somewhere like that. Not an overly rare one. <coughs> Some little train cars. I can definitely see there's lots of track. So there's a few cars in here. If I'm lucky, I'll find some Redline Hot Wheels or something really valuable. These ones are a bit newer, kind of in rough shape. Some will probably get donated or put in my my parts bin oh let's see what's in here the old plastic bag full of stuff this is neat and actually in pretty good shape not too bad 
It's a dinky toy for birth caravan, so it's a camper. Kind of like 1950s little uh, toe behind camper. The door looks like it's missing, but otherwise it's pretty good. There's a little matchbox ambulance in there. It's pretty neat. But yeah, kind of a cool thing. So I'm gonna put my cool stuff on the table next to me. Little totem pole. I'm gonna pull out the little, oh, there's a good one right there. You guys see that? It's a little matchbox Volkswagen van. Decent condition too. A lot of times these would be run across a carpet or outside and the bottoms get all worn off. This one's pretty good. The logos, the transfers are still in good condition. That goes on in the cool pile. So it's a good sign that there's some older stuff in here. Um, the fellow that owned this stuff, has, sadly has passed since, um, but he was about the same age as my dad, which means that he was a kid in the 19... 50s and 60s. So that explains why there's some 50s and 60s toys. And of course, dinky toys very popular in Canada and England. And they had them in the US too. This is just a little um, accessory for a tractor. So maybe I'll find the tractor in there. So little guns. Pretty neat. <coughs> Into the cool pile. There you go. Uh, sometime. Oh, that, that looks like Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett, King of the Wild Frontier, right there, in his little horse. So these were probably Marx figures. Um, if I if I look closely enough, I might find it says Marx or Linemar. Um, I know this is an accessory for a Lionel train car. I'm just gonna set those aside for now. Some little lead soldiers, right there. A little race car. This would have been all green. Somebody's brush painted it. It's a Connaught racer missing the tires. You can get reproduction tires for these things. That's not a big deal. Soldiers up top. Mercedes Benz. Funny, I actually just looked at one of these exact same cars in a field today. 220 SE. The one I looked at was a 220 S. No tires. Uh, paint is good. Missing the grill. Might find it in the box. There's another dinky toy, it looks like. MGA. It's a Corgi MGA. And there are people that can restore these things too and bring them back to life. In fact, I sell a lot of that stuff to people who are basically just looking for something to fix up. Another old one, Corgi. Standard Vanguard. I actually owned a Vanguard at one time. Funny little British car. I had a 19. 47 standard Vanguard, very rounded, different looking than this. That's the trailer for the semi. So there are some older cars mixed with the new. That's an older Hot Wheels. It's probably from about 1975 or six. It's just after red lines were out. Um, so this is one of the early black walls. It's a boogie van. And sometimes they made these vans in castings where you could look through the back window and it would show like a little picture or image. I think I had the Incredible Hulk or something when I was a kid. I used to think that was neat. <coughs> So there are a few old toy cars in here. These are older Hot Wheels right there. I'm gonna try and get the uh, the train track. There's another, this is probably the sort of thing that would have been on the back of that. You know, there probably would have been a few and then they were tied down with little strings. Might have a whole train set in here actually from the looks of things. Let's get some of the track out of the way. There's a lot of track in here. I'm hoping there's gonna be some more cool cars or toys. What's that one? Just a little a Lamborghini. Rough shape. And not really that old. Well, I mean, it's, it's old now. It's not old, it's not old compared to me, but it's old. This is a tin body. This is probably Mark's, not Lionel. Cute little thing. O gauge, that's the size. There's, it goes from um, like Z or N to H O to O to standard gauge. This is um, not a size that's really that popular anymore. Um, I like it. It's a tra traditional size that, that when you watch a movie and somebody has a uh, train running around their Christmas tree, which incidentally we do, we put a train around our tree. I'm digging through. These are definitely fort walls. 
this was probably like a um, a Davy Crockett playset, and you put all these around, and it makes a, a whole fort. And then you've got the uh, the figures that go with it. My dad had the Roy Rogers playset. I know that was one of his favorites. That's if you were a kid at the time in the 1950s, you were ordering your stuff out of the Sears catalog or one of the other catalogs. We have Eaton's and other companies here. Actually, look. Uh, I think that might be instructions. Oh no, silo and conveyor. Maybe a train, train instructions. I wonder if I have this in there somewhere. Pretty neat. Maybe the rest of that's in there somewhere. I think he had a race set at one time, Strombecker parts. Don't see any slot cars in here. That was another old Matchbox. Lesney. Is it Lesney? No, it's not. Ben Brothers, made in England. Well, that's unusual. That's basically looks just like a little matchbox truck. I've never had one. You know, all the years of collecting toy cars, I've never had one, but I'm gonna put it with the other cool ones. Over here, my little pile of treasure. And this is just one box. My entire car is packed full of stuff. This other little train car. Oh, that looks like a um, like a Boy Scout kind of knife or a fisherman's knife. This is for pulling rope. This piece right here. It's always cool to find a pocket knife. More light soldiers. I think there's too much more for cars in the bottom here. But I'll have to go through and see if I have this whole playset. That would be pretty darn cool if I did. Maybe I have the whole thing in there. But I will tell you this. Out of what I have so far, this little camper, probably, you know, um, that guy there. If I can find a reproduction door online, you know, that's probably a $40 camper. In that shape, it's maybe 20 bucks. This little Volkswagen there is probably like a, um, like a $50 toy, which sounds crazy, but it, it is. Um, so considering already we're probably like at, you know, a couple hundred dollars worth of toys, you know, when you consider the train set and the individual even at 10 bucks a piece or something like that, um, it's starting to add up. So worthwhile to buy mystery boxes on occasion because you might end up getting some cool stuff. And we'll see what we have. So out of this box, we got an entire train set with transformer, track, um, trestles, the whole deal, full set. We also got a, what looks like a Davy Crockett Frontier playset, a Mark set from the 1950s. It does not look complete, but there are some key pieces there, and the fort's pretty well all there. We got some old Corgi, Dinky, and Matchbox toys, some old Hot Wheels, some British Britons metal soldiers, and a variety of other stuff, including this little curling set game with some of the pieces. These are the figures off of what I think was one of those true action football games that you just kind of shook and vibrated and the guys moved around. Um, but the, the guys are often missing. So I don't have the set, but I have the guys. And all the time I find the set with no guys. So I'll keep those around. I'll find them. And just all kinds of odds and ends. So for the first box, uh, I feel like I pretty well got my investment back out of just the one box. And I still have a whole carload of stuff to go through. So I'm busy at the store unpacking some of the stuff that I bought. People are starting to filter through. Melissa's here with uh, some friends, it looks like. And I'm going through boxes, just seeing exactly what I purchased uh, the other day. Haven't been through a lot of these yet, so let's... <laughs> so this is what's going on in the shop right now. We've got Todd hanging out. We've got Bob over there looking at stuff. My wife has come in and brought company, and I am going through boxes of treasures, trying to do this in my downtime and clean up this horrific mess which is behind my counter. Hopefully by the end of the day, I'll have that done. But um, yeah, I was gonna start going through some of these boxes and see what's inside. Yeah, I've been following you. And, I keep telling Melissa, I said, I'm not getting anything done. I keep on going on. You keep watching our channel? Well, that's well, good that we're a distraction. Three of them unlocked, or at least two of them. This is an old, um, Dosses and then <laughs> this is probably 1940s based on, it's an old work coat, like, a, like an overall kind of lab coat idea. Something you'd work on in a shop like a technician's jacket. Uh, these look like really old coveralls and the right ones can be quite valuable. These are GWG red strap. This is, this will be surprising. These could be like quite valuable. Coveralls can be quite collectible to the right person. You just don't see old workwear very often. 
and GWG was made here in Edmonton. And the, the old building still stands, but that's cool. Really cool. Money bags, or postal bags, actually they're Canada Post bags. They're empty. Not sure what a person would do. They're kind of neat though. Old postal letter carrier bags. Old backpack. Oh, these are kind of cool. Check those out. These got to be 1950s Acton. Really old. They look like basketball shoes. That's cool. You don't find old old school shoes like that around very often. And they're both in there. Looks like there's a pair of them. Yep. This could be worth some good money. I'm not, to be honest with you, not sure what these would sell for. But I do know in the world of vintage clothing, um, there are sneaker heads out there that collect this kind of stuff. And that's not something that you find too often. Backpack, shin guards, all kinds of fun stuff. So if somebody's into old sports gear, maybe he played baseball and those look like catcher gear. Well, there's another box down here. This is old football stuff. Those are the old football bottoms. Like 50s era and all the gear. Looks like there's quite a few uniforms in there. Let's see if there's a sweater or jersey. Let's see if there's a top. Let's see. Metal arc. There's another sweater here, a couple of them. Oh, it's a Montreal Canadian sweater. Wool. Not in the greatest shape, but it's old. It's a turtleneck. For the Habs fans out there, old hockey jerseys can be pretty collectible. And this, number 17, football jersey. Med. Vet Med. Well, he did become a veterinarian, a doctor, so I guess this must have been when he was in college going to veterinary school. Really, really cool. Let's see if we can build a whole uniform out of that. Mystery box number two. Looks like a hunting jacket for your ammo and stuff. Columbia Sportsman, Portland, Oregon. Hmm. Set that over there. Let's see. What is all this stuff? Leather bag of some sort? Have to open that up and see. Maybe it doesn't even open. Could just be a pillow or something. Oh, some fishing stuff. Some little knives. That is a hoof. That is also a knife. And that's creepy. Where is it from? That doesn't have a name on it. Well, that's an odd thing to find in the bottom of a box. So this little hunting hat was in the box. So this is the uh, don't find me side and this is the don't shoot me side. <laughs> so I guess you don't find yourself getting shot at. But, you know, probably an older piece, maybe from the 70s or 60s. Still somewhat usable, kind of cool. Mystery box number three. And already I can see... Uh, yeah, I can't remember if this one was Packard or Nash or Kaiser. It's a nice old hood ornament, though. Could have been Kaiser Fraser. I can't remember what the swan was. It's, I'm, I'll realize after I do this video and then everybody will say, Oh, you call yourself a car guy? You should have known what that was right away. I know it's one of the off-brands. Let's see, some old binoculars. And the reason I'm doing this with one hand is because I did not bring my tripod today. I do have one, and I do have a, a GoPro, but I never seem to remember to bring them when I'm doing this kind of stuff. That's going to be probably 1940s era. These ones look a little bit older. Were they marked at all, Greg? Um, yeah, there was a Are they French, Paris? Yeah. yeah. Parisian, probably like a notch up above a regular opera glass. Yeah. So when you go to the show, you can actually see what's happening on the stage. It's for the person who can't afford the front row seats. You get those. A little bull of a watch box. If you find an old bull of a watch, that'd be cool. A used Sharpie marker. Garbage. Nice old seat. French Edgar. 
good shape, really. This is an antique seat. It's in pretty good condition. A leather saddle like that would be good to go on a nice old bike. Pretty ornate brass bell. Hard to tell with these things how old they are. Because, you know, a lot of them are reproduced. Still are reproduced. Baseball glove. Looks like this guy was into a lot of different sports. See what the model was. A lot of times they have a baseball player's name that they... Oh, it just says uh, Thin Line Little League Ball. Sometimes you'd find it and it would say the Hank Aaron model or the Mickey Mantle model. And those can make them more valuable. A bottle with pennies in it. I always seem to find jars full of pennies. A really... Uh, Queen Mary Long Beach. This must have been just a little, you know, thing that they sold on the Queen Mary. Ship in a bottle. I remember these guys. I can't remember what they're called. So what if I ain't good looking? I'm faithful. Let's hope my wife remembers that as I age out. Nice little general store. There's all kinds of goodies in this box. This is for removing uh, bark off of logs. That, that little piece right there. If you're making log cabins, see if I can get it out. This is what you do. Um, you pull it towards you and it shaves the bark off of a tree. Kind of an interesting little piece. Yeah, fairly sharp. It's got a, actually a really sharp edge on it. That thing probably be used like right now. We'll go through the rest of this and see what's in here. You never know what treasures you're going to find when you're going through oh, cufflinks. Wah, wah, wah. Unless they're solid gold, which these probably aren't. But they're Tuxford styled for men. Hmm. Have a nice day. Well, isn't that just a nice gesture? Old glass doorknobs. These are nickel-plated or chrome-plated ones. A lot of times you see them in brass, too. Looks like me finding giant cleavers lately. This is like almost every... Every episode that I've been doing lately has involved a giant cleaver. Um, this leave one I'll have to look cleaver? and see. You know, leave it to cleaver. <laughs> they sell, though. Actually, check this out. It's a nice old lock. Keys, too. That's a bonus. Yeah, it's got the keys. It's not marked, like, with a railway name, but that is an older piece. It still has the keys. You can check it out. Yeah. Go for it. Little ranch drop forage. Sometimes these are marked like Alice Chalmers or International Harvester. Still works. Still works? Yep. Yeah. All the keys for all the things. Oh, really old beanie. Not in the best shape. Everybody's got telephone insulators sitting around. And they can have them. There's only certain ones that have any kind of value. Mug made it from California here. Pennant. Let's see. Vet Frosh. Okay. That's his uh, frosh tie, I guess, he'd have to wear when he was at college. I'll put that with his uniform. All kinds of treasures and goodies. And I'm hanging around the shop today, kind of getting stuff cleaned up and organized. And I've been keeping a few things to give back to the family. So today we had... Uh, Mary's daughter Karen came through. We were able to give back a lot of family photos and some other items. Um, but I've been keeping something special. Um, Mary's father was named uh, Charles Mason and was a World War I vet. And um, his great great grandson is preserving that legacy. We want to make sure we get some things back. So meet Ryan, of course, a relative of Mary's great uh, her, great, Ma great 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 grandson of Mary's dad. Mary's dad. So Mary is my great aunt. Great aunt. Yeah. And so what did we find for you today to give back? Well, Alex found great-great-grandpa's uh, uh, World War I uh, medal here. That's right. Um, medal. And uh, well, he was it out. It was uh, inscribed on the bottom here with his name. And 16th Regiment. 16th Regiment, yep. So uh, that's all the big ones. Yeah. Uh, Jamie Ridge, Somme. Uh, all the main battles, and then his ribbons as well. Yeah, and he was highly decorated too. I think he won the the Medal of Valor and some other ones. I mean, he definitely uh, served, and he served after First World War, which a lot of guys after the First World War just left, um, went back home. But he stayed in for another five, six years or more mm -hmm. after the end of the war, which is really cool. Um, and now I learned something about you today that I didn't know. Um, I know I'm an entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur too. And yeah. so, what do you do for a living? 
I make beer. What a, what a yeah. wonderful hobby slash business to have. Uh, yeah. And you brought some of your samples and now I wasn't expecting anything to come in. But this is your brand here. Yeah, so to repay you for everything you've done for us and the family and the house and preserving Mary's legacy, I brought you some beer that, uh, that we brew. This is a new company uh, that I've started called Ale Architect. Is that what's on your shirt too? Yes. So it says Ale Architect, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Architect makes, uh, is like a meeting of engineering and creativity. I come from a creative background, my partner's an engineer. So, so it worked we kind out. of build these beers. It's nice looking packaging too. Yeah. Um, the packaging is all different. If you look closely at the labels, I can see that's different. Very artsy. Unique. So who yeah. did the art? I did. You did the art. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's like very yeah. pop arty. Yeah. It's all computer driven. So um, there's like five thousand different variations for each each product. There's a different label. And you can buy this in Alberta it's right now. Right now in Alberta only. Until you get bigger, and then Until you're going to be bigger. global and yeah. dominate the beer industry. Yeah. <laughs> We're based here in Edmonton, and yeah, it's distributed all over Alberta. It's your favorite liquor store doesn't have it, you can definitely ask. Ask for it. Ask for Ale Architect. We're giving him a plug because I believe that, uh, you know, these guys have all been amazing through this whole process. And um, my wife and I both partake every once in a while. Uh, just nice to see some people following their dreams too and, and living their passions out. So if you're interested in purchasing some Ale Architect from the Alberta area, ask your local liquor store uh, to bring it in. It, and as always, you know, don't consume in excess, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, very cool of you to bring that in. And I'm so glad we're able to get some of your stuff back to you too. Yeah, it's amazing. Ah, my pleasure. A few little Coleman items here. There are collectors of just Coleman. I have one customer who has basically enough Coleman stuff to build his own store. And these little lanterns are nice to find when they're in their case like this, complete with instructions. Probably just add fuel and away you go. These will be ready and probably a quick sale for me. I've got a friend coming by to have a look at the Porsche parts. He should be here pretty soon. I'm hoping with any luck that he can find use for it. I know there was really good value in some of the pieces, like the front signal lights, the rear tail lights, the bumpers, all that stuff really starts to add up when you're restoring a car, which I'm not right now. So for me, it's just extra space that I don't need or want. So if he can get some things that he can maybe use down the road and I can get it out of my life and get my money back on it, those are all good things. So we'll see, fingers crossed, that I can make a deal with him and get that stuff out of my car. With a potential sale on the Porsche parts and all the other treasures I found, it looks like I'll be able to at least triple my money on this investment and got lots of cool stuff for the shop. Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you like these little adventures and we'll see you all soon. Don't forget to subscribe, bye for now.